offers. We will be jumping right into pick some bands of set number one between Koo Tigers and Samsung. Koo on the blue side and Samsung going ahead and banning that Kalista out as they are on purple side. And there are Alistair and Maokai taking out more and more Alistair first picks and bans this yeah. week as it starts to rise in terms of priority. Azir will not be played by Crown, actually a champion that he's played quite well. Huh. Yeah, uh, interesting that they would go in and ban that. Uh, and when there are plenty of other priority picks left. As a reminder, we are on patch 5.9. Yes. Which means that Ash will be available as well. Yeah, I've been wondering if we'll see that this week. Knowing Korea, it's very probable we won't yet, even though they've had some time on the live server to mess with it. But we might with some of the newer players uh, taking some of the bigger risks or maybe trying to throw the curveballs towards the veterans. And there we go, Gragas first lock for the Koo Tigers. No surprise there. Now, Gorilla has been practicing a lot of Bard in solo queue, oh, man. as many people have. and. Will we actually get to see the bar today? It is banned against Janair every single game so far this season. No one wants to let Sweet have it. He's developed quite the <laughs> reputation for himself in oh, the scrim man. environment, apparently. Yeah, I, it's very impressive that you can do that with such a niche champion. But on the flip side, they're going to take Sivir and Rek'Sai. He's been doing quite well on Rek'Sai throughout the spring season. And Sivir, of course, a high priority and stable pick for the AD carry in. Koo Tigers know that, you know, a lot of experts and fans have been keeping track of solo queue champions, and so they're hovering over the bard a little bit to get everyone's hopes up, but if we're going to see it, we're probably not going to see it now, at least not in this uh, set of picks, I wouldn't think. Yeah, the Thresh Lulu going to come in, so very safe roster. This probably means they're going to run a Lucian here. Yeah, would make sense. Something with a little more punch. Uh, also a little bit more laning power against Sivir. They could also run Vayne here. Yeah, I was wondering that. I mean, Prey used to be one of those players who also would get in on the whole Vayne battle <laughs> and one person starts picking it. Uh, last night we did see the lulu Vayne combination, uh, and it was very effective with Gragas in the jungle, so the setup was extremely good. It resulted in a pretty resounding victory, so. Yeah, we've just been seeing teams figure out how to complement Vayne now in the new uh, patches to make her work again instead of where, you know, in the past it was just like, Vayne, do your own thing, and if you're good enough as a player, then you'll make it work, if not, too bad. And now we're seeing things like Gragas and other champions help make those picks, and Bard being highlighted by Samsung in return. Since Thresh yes. Oh, we do have a lock-in, and by Luna. Somehow seems fitting. <laughs> There's something about the name and the look of Bard, but Bard going to be played in the first, first game time. today. Yeah, first, first time, time in, Korea. in Korea that we've seen Bard. So they could go for Ash here, but I don't think they're going to do that. No. I mean, Ash doesn't provide, I think, enough punch to carry this team composition. Okay. Ash, hmm. Ash Kennen, actually, I've been theorizing about this. Ash Kennen and Ash uh, Renekton, I think, could be quite good together. But Jinx and Rumble instead. Uh, Rise. Okay. Jury still seems to be a little bit out of Rise, but no, they're going to play Rumble yeah, here. I would, <laughs> I would be very surprised if they went for the Rise here. The Rise is just isn't worth it because then you'd have two scaling champions with not a lot of wave clear. And the Rumble also provides the AoE earlier for Jinx to start getting resets. You don't want to be reliant on that in the late game. You need some extra damage in the mid game. Now, will they try and play with this Twisted Fate up against Lulu? Uh, well, you know, Twisted Fate or any any global champion alongside Bard could make a lot of things yep. worse. And then you have the teleport. I mean, you just give so much time for things to be set I'm, up even more perfectly. I will be so psyched if they pick Twisted Fate here, Chobra, because the map movement that you get with TF and yeah. with Bard is going to, and with Sivir, and yeah. with Rek'Sai, are you kidding me? And then a they're going, and Tom with they're going to be <laughs> everywhere on this map. This could be extremely exciting to watch. I mean, theoretically, if you take this pick, I Samsung think it's a wonderful has pick. to be able, I mean, they have the ability to play every fight yes. the way they want to. Like, <laughs> it's just there for them, all the tools they need yeah. to set it up. We've got three <laughs> globals, Void Rush, 
ATF ult, and then a teleport coming in from NAR. Everyone can pile into the bottom side of the map. Oh, man. And they can move so quickly through the terrain with Bard and Sivir. Man, this is a really exciting, I love this draft from Samsung. This is really I, good. Now, this is going to be really hard for any team to pull off. Yes. Right? Really difficult. But, so it may not work. Samsung, of course, not the highest skill team in this league. And this is a very high skill composition. <laughs> but I, I think it's going to be really fun to watch and see how this operates. Because the thing here is Ku wants to get together. And they've got a great combination of champions to set up for Jinx resets, of course. With the Gragas ult, isolate somebody, burn him down with a minigun, and then start piling on through with the Whimsy. So the Tiger's going for a composition. They love running this Lulu mid in combination with a hyper carry AD. So super fun to watch from the Tigers. And Samsung going for picks. Yeah. This is all about creating picks, taking down towers. I am really, really psyched to see this game. Yeah, this composition can make picks happen when the enemy team is grouped up even with that Bard ultimate. So we'll see how well Samsung has prepared this. I mean, it looks like they've been thinking about this for quite some time if you're going to be bold enough to pick that Bard as the first player to do so in uh, champions here in Korea. So game one is ready between Ku Tigers and Samsung. Let's see how Luna's Bard is. Relatively quieter cheers as it is still class time for many people and a lot of uh, a lot of college students actually if you're in the graduating class uh, can't really skip out early anymore on your classes so our buff girl and interviewer are also going to be joining us late here in the studio <laughs> as, as we do have earlier broadcast times on Thursday. All right, well. Man, Doa hates me right now. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, <laughs> the first time I get to cast the first Bard game in Korea. <laughs> well, we'll see if it works out. I mean, obviously Bard has been picked in other regions. It was picked at MSI, but no yeah. one's had a spectacular Bard game yet. But we know, we know the spectacular Bard game is coming. It's only a matter <laughs> of time because of yes. this champion can do so many things in terms of utility. Very hard to play him in solo queue. Uh, because you have to have great teamwork to utilize Bard to the fullest extent. Yeah. And also teams have to practice a lot as a unit in order to really unlock his power. So it, it, we knew it was going to be a while before Bard really showed up. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like Nar. I mean, when Nar first came out, yes. everyone theorized that he was really strong, but no one was confident enough to make it work in a professional setting for quite some time. Yeah, not even just confidence, lack of practice. So lane yeah. swap going to be attempted here. Of course, Bard not the strongest laner, and Jinx at level one is oh. very strong against Sivir. Yeah, and Thresh coming in too, of course, a uh, power support in the lane. So this is going to be a little tough for Samsung. Uh, especially if Luna wants to take some time to go pick up his charms too. Uh, Fury will have to be careful in lane. So Jinx is very immobile, well not in this composition and uh, you know there's a lot of ways to abuse this Jinx right here in terms of the TF. Once TF gets that Sonya's Hourglass and can just TP into the back line, they've got numerous ways to dive. And of course that Bard ultimate as well. They get it down onto the Jinx, then the rest of Ku should be pretty easy to clean up. I'm I'm very excited to see this. Samsung's composition, I think, is excellent. Man, the dream play would be if Crown doesn't pick up Azonias and always relies on Bard's ultimate and goes in and gets ulted. <laughs> so if you can time, damage. if you can time that, <laughs> if you can time that, that would be insane. Jonathan. That'd be so sick. <laughs> if if he can teleport into the back line. <laughs> throw a gold card, and then get Bard ulted himself while the rest of his team comes in, that would be incredible to watch. <laughs> yeah, it, it would take a lot of good positioning and timing and skill and communication, but we can always hope. One of these days, someone will pull it off, even if it's not Luna today. But uh, as expected, especially given that they didn't get the lane swap, or you know, both teams got the lane swap, rather, it's going to be pretty passive here in the early phase of Samsung not wanting to take any chances as they don't really have anyone who's going to power through that laning phase. 
Yeah, and this is a very interesting early gank onto Twisted Fate that's coming in. There's a Thresh in the mid lane right now. Yeah, Lulu not there to really take advantage of that, but Crown also just gonna back off pretty far anyway. And that gives Luna time to go pick up his charms too, as uh, the Ku Tigers pushed up in the top lane and then decide to go for a roam. Wisdom pretty low, but just gonna pick up the Scuttle Crab for his team. Uh, and that's gonna put a lot of threat actually onto Crown too, because Thresh can now really move back and forth between the top and mid lane very quickly. Yeah, and they tried to use that opportunity to see if they could find a roam onto Crown, start punishing this Twisted Fate early, but they don't get it. Instead, just right back into lane and Fury Able to go pretty unharassed right here to spam oh, in the wow. mid lane. Okay, well they really want to punish Crown. Crown does take quite a bit of damage. He had to use his ghost to make sure that he had an escape there. Everyone in the mid lane. This is some <laughs> pretty intense mid lane focus from the Tigers right here. And they're sacrificing a little lane Domus to do it, particularly in top side. I mean, if Rumble pushes up, it's actually a great opportunity to roam because you don't want to die on that bottom side while your jungler is clearing out the Scuttle Crab in the top river, so I think that was a really effective use of his time. But maybe they could have put a little bit more pressure on with this Jinx. Yeah. Luna also doing a pretty decent job of trying to keep up any minor harass along the direction. Mean, both of them having that auto attack modifier but can do decent damage if that starts to pile on. So just keeping each other's AD carries on their toes. Fury doing a good job doing whatever damage he can alongside the Ricochet onto Gorilla to make sure that the Koo Tigers don't get too aggressive. And here we go, wave hitting the turret. And they've got to back off though. Crown's getting very close to level six. They don't have a good idea of where the enemy jungler is either. Eve hasn't been trying to make plays yet as Luna just wanders around for charms. <laughs> Bard, the most peaceful champion in League of Legends. Doesn't care for other people's fights. Just wants to collect charms and enjoy his music. <laughs> and leave health packs. And leave health packs. I mean, he's truly the nicest. Prevent people from fighting with his ultimate. <laughs> Pacifist Bard. Oh, nice stun on to Prey. That's going to give them a lot of damage. And I mean, that's the thing is that while it's hard to land, he does have a pretty decent stun in terms of duration. So you can really put down a good skill rotation from your AD carry. And here we go. Wisdom checking out the other side of this Krug pit, seeing if he can steal anything away. Forces Eve to use the flash right there. Oh, the smite, yeah. Or smite, yes. <laughs> Well, no if, flash. If Eve really had to flash right, on that got, one. I got too excited. <laughs> Sorry, Jebra. <laughs> but otherwise, I'll, a crown, you know, a little bit down. A little bit down in CS, and we'll see if he can pick all this up to catch back up. But of course, he's also been under pressure. So if he can catch back up after this, then he's just fine with everything that's been happening. And his teammates have, in fact, been able to even out in their lanes, although some disadvantage has have been shown at the beginning. Yeah, and right now, Ku's job is just to control the Twisted Fate in the mid lane. They want to keep pressing this up, so he either has to go back and miss some minion waves. Oh, here we go. Wow, that is oh, a creative gank. A, yeah, Crown coming in with his ultimate. He does get the Golgar. Kuro flashes. They still have vision of Kuro, especially with Tremor Sets. But double teleport coming in from both teams, and there's a knockoff onto both teams as Eve comes back in after Smash Wild Growth. The equalizer going down. Crown had to flash away from that one. Cube still trying to go for some damage, but he doesn't have his rage filled up, so he can't turn into Meganar. And now everybody with a party in mid lane as the top lane duo show up too. And now we're gonna go into siege mode. Wow, this game is so <laughs> funny. Everyone's always in mid lane in this one as the TF has totally taken over this game. Samsung knows that there's a lot of big potential with this composition. So they don't want to get all in, so they keep trying to control Crown as to where he can ult. It was a creative gank from Samsung. Yeah. Kind of tricky there with the first TF ult of the game. Usually you don't see moves like that, but Kuro had his head on his shoulders, got out, and then Smeb and Kuve came, both came in with teleports, 2v3 for the Tigers, but they're able to even it out just because of Smeb's power in the mid game with that equalizer as well as a nice wild growth knocking him up right as that teleport completed. Yeah, I mean, that, that kind of move from Tuesday, we used to see a lot in the earlier seasons, especially in solo queue, because you just try to duel and be like, all right, I'm going to go home, you can push up, and then you show up at the same health, but behind them, and you just ignite them and run away. Uh, so Samsung trying to go for something like that with the teamwork from EVE, but it just turned into a party. 
No one got hurt. But Samsung having a slight lead in gold in terms of farm because of all the roaming coming in from the Koo Tigers earlier. Prey trying to keep Fury at base so they can try to push this up and force Fury to lose some CS, but that's not going to happen as Samsung is able to keep the minions at bay. So we'll see what Koo does. They obviously want to group up this game. They have to fight pretty much as five. Whereas Samsung, they need to start getting some isolated targets right here. Eve trying to... Yeah, Kerr actually getting stunned just to put some harass down onto Eve as Wisdom shows up. He does have explosive cast, so Samsung not taking any chances. Yeah, Kerr knowing he was safe right there to get the harass down while they were taking out his pink ward. And we will see Smeb recalling now as the Tigers switch into the bottom side of the map just to get a little bit more pressure onto the Dragon, and they will be matched by Samsung. Yeah, but Samsung is gonna be the one taking the magical journey down to bottom lane. It's chime time, Chobra. <laughs> Gorilla gonna be spotted by Eve. Uh, Prey is there, so nothing too big happening. Luna doesn't have his ultimate just yet. This is less pick happy than I thought it would be. I'm really, <laughs> I really want Crown to go ahead and find a time to use his next ult already. Uh, they do have some better control over the Dragon Pit. If they can push out the bottom side, just because they have that TF teleport, they can pretty much own the positioning on the Dragon with this composition. Yeah, and Fury actually being quite a bit ahead in experience thanks to Luna roaming about. Now, once Luna gets his ultimate, uh, Samson will be really real good shape for any sort of Dragon fight, although Koo Tigers do have the Equalizer and Rumble. And Wisdom trying to do a little bit of counter juggling right here. Gets a ward in by the Raptor buff. But Eve, not anywhere nearby at the moment. And the Tigers playing this pretty passively. Smeb taking a bit of a hit in terms of CS in this matchup, partially because of his roaming in this game. Yeah, with a couple of those early roams when they were on bottom side. That did allow QV to pick up that farm, get that Hex Drinker so that he's more stable in lane. And Samsung's uh, bottom lane duo is doing just fine while allowing Luna to roam about for his chimes. Now, Luna does have his ultimate, so does Gorilla, but he takes a huge chunk from the boomerang blade. Meanwhile, Crown being really pressured in this mid lane. He wants to stay back. He knows Wisdom somewhere nearby. So lots of damage, and the constant pressing up on this tower is preventing Crown from actually making TP plays on the map. So they've bottled him up for quite a long time right now, preventing him from really helping out those side lanes and thereby extending the laning phase, which is exactly what the Tigers want because they're going to be so strong as a five-man unit in the late game. And if they can get to the phase where they just group up together, uh, they've got incredible dive under turrets, really good siege, and there's not a lot that Samsung's going to be able to do to stop that. Yeah, uh, Luna trying to put on a little more harass now, especially as they try to find some positioning for a Dragon Fight or a pick, and then into Dragon for Samsung. It's gonna be pretty tricky though, as teleports will be up at exactly the same time for both Smeb and Cuve. Luna just picking up another chime and hanging out with Eve, seeing if they can make something happen. Fury feeling pretty safe right now in the bottom lane. We do have Wisdom walking on over to the bottom lane. Luna's gonna need to watch out. They're gonna spot the two members of the Koo Tigers. That pink ward will be cleared by Wisdom. Maybe. We do have Eve over the wall, but there is the land. So Wisdom's just gonna no. ride I, it out. The Koo Tigers really aren't giving Samsung any opportunities to make these picks or to make these ganks right now. They, every time that Elaine has been pushing forward, Wisdom has been there in case there's a gank and he needs to counter it, staying right in the fog of war, waiting while Kuro pushes up that minion wave under turret. Now as Prey was starting to move forward, everyone was at the bottom side of the map once again. So they're playing very patiently right now and the Tigers know the risks that are involved and they're happy with their current situation. Yeah, they're a little bit behind in gold, but they know that slow and steady will win the race with these compositions, and there's just an equalizer. You see, he's not even walking up right now. Literally yeah. no risks are being taken by the Tigers. Yeah, very safe. Of course, Eva will have to take some time to clear this one out. Smed looking for an opportunity to go home. And he'll be walking back up, trying to save that teleport also for any immediate dragon threat. And like we discussed, of course, with that jinx, the Kutaris will have that higher power spike in the late game. 
as long as Jinx stays alive. I mean, Samsung still has the opportunity to make the picks happen in the late game, too. If they yes. pick off Prey, the game could end very quickly. Especially with the Zhenya's Hourglass. That's such a key item for this composition against the Jinx. Yes, with that, with that item, TF is a wonderful pick against Jinx, generally speaking. And that's a very interesting magical journey that you can take right there. <laughs> yeah, you, you can really cut some time going back to lane. <laughs> Flipping into the base wall. <laughs> and Luna doing just fine in terms of picking up his chimes. Uh, he's been able to stay equal in level to Gorilla, uh, which means you, know, you should be pretty happy as your meeps grow in power. I always wanted my meep to grow in power, Chobra. Yeah. The stronger your meep, the better your life. <laughs> Benj sure. Benjamin Franklin <laughs> quote right there. <laughs> Two Tigers making sure they also keep vision around the Dragon Pit. Yeah, I mean, like you said, Monty, the Tigers aren't taking any chances for any unnecessary advantage towards Samsung. I mean, some of the farm advantage that Samsung currently has, you can't really do too much about, but not giving up objectives for free, not giving up ganks for free. And Wisdom also trying to deny some experience from me whenever he can by going into the enemy jungle and taking out a camp or two. Eve also just clearing out wards back and forth. Lots of pink wards from both sides too because of the vision war that's starting so intensely. Uh, look at the chip damage on that tower too. Crown nearly losing his turret already. And that's going to provide even fewer options. Here comes Crown. Oh, but a gank towards top. There's the Equalizer forcing Crown to flash out of it, but they still get the slow onto Spev. Can they get another gold card? He does. There's a wild card. Can Cubey dive the tower? He will. Crown tanking it for the time being. Cubey turning to Meganar at the end after he picks up the kill. Now Eve, it's up to him to defend this mid tier one. And it looks like he will be able to wisdom actually being on the top side of the map. Will he be able to? Not so sure oh, about that. Actually, it's yeah, extremely low right now. And we do see Eve yeah. coming in for the knockup and just barely able to defend. Meanwhile, Wisdom is going to hold on the top side. And that's kind of unavoidable with this composition. I'm actually impressed that it took as long as it did for Samsung to net a kill, considering the presence they have on the map yeah. with their champion selection. So as long as Ku can just normalize with this turret right now, they're trying to get onto it and pick up some more of that global gold to stay in the running. They're going to be just fine with losing Smeb. Smeb's bigger problem is the fact that he's behind 40 CS in this game because he's been playing so timidly as a result of the TF Rek'Sai combination and his fear of dying in lane. Yeah, this tower is not gonna survive too long though. It looks like Samsung will eventually just give it up, uh, allowing the Koo Tigers to equalize ever so slightly in terms of global gold. Nice stun onto Kuro, but it's just going to result in harass back and forth and then taking the magical journey. So I was talking with the Korean casters, and they said that the name in Korean for magical journey isn't as funny as the one in English. No, so all the Korean casters actually just say magical journey with a Korean accent. They're like, <laughs> magical journey. <laughs> That's what they say when the, when the skill comes out. <laughs> They are very disappointed that Magical <laughs> Journey was not as hilarious in Korean as it is in English. Equalizer being used again just to clear out that wave. I mean, it's pretty short on cooldown, but Samsung going to take that advantage to take the Dragon to stay at least one small step ahead. Yep, and right now, Tiger's just giving up the Dragon. They know that they'll be able to group on it in later team fights, and what they want is just to get some more gold onto Prey right now, see if they can push down this turret. Ping's going down for the Tigers at the top side. And will they actually try and defend the bottom tier one at all? Doesn't Snab, have like understandably it. worried about his ability to stay alive in that situation. Cuvee yeah, just trying to put down some harass on Prey too to put down the pressure of a possible gank coming in, but not gonna happen with four members of the Ku Tigers in that top lane. Cuvee may just have to back out as Samsung did also get the tier one and bottom, so they'll just have to be satisfied with a 1-1 one -one trade. And but the turrets. loss of Dragon as well, so Ku just trying to stave off any kind of engagement until the late game as the tower falls in favor of Jinx in the top lane. Smeb just tries to cover in mid in the interim. Explosive cast right there. <laughs> They're so worried <laughs> about these picks. 
Yeah, very passively. Using all their ults just to clear out the immediate threat for the time being. Equalizers and explosive cast being used. And, you know, the Tigers, they don't really care about having those fights anyway at this point in the game, so. I'm just very impressed with how defensively the Tigers are able to play. And yeah. they're only 800 gold down right now, so it hasn't really cost them a whole hell of a lot yet. Yeah, they do have that one extra tower to help equalize for that. Oh, there's a bar that's not going to hit. Magical Journey over the wall, but a double knockup onto Prey and Gorilla. A gold card coming in, and that should be a kill onto Gorilla. He's going to get it. The spell shield at the end to avoid the death sentence into tower range. And they just zoned out with the Tempered Fate right there, which caused Samsung, or uh, Ku rather, to not be able to react quite as quickly as they were able to. And a flash double stun from Luna as well. Yeah. Hitting that tether, so nice setup there, very decisive from Samsung, but they come away with just a single kill. Yeah, so they're getting some of the advantage, not as much as they'd like, but it's just it's so small is the problem. When they make these plays, they they got a dragon. That's probably their biggest edge to date, but only having two kills in the pick comp after 20 minutes is not exactly ideal. And not the greatest. And Crown going for Lich Bane right after for a little bit more burst. As they do have a lot of crowd control to complement that. We'll probably go for the Zonias later on in the game. And we saw Luna using that, as you mentioned, Temper Fate. A little bit more for zoning, which we've seen with Equalizers in the past too. Where you can really just kind of block off that escape route. Allowing for your other crowd control to come in for sure. Uh, but we'll see if there are other creative uses for it for a Samsung as the game goes on. They're going to probably need those other creative uses if they want to secure the win of this first set. So the Lich Bane first onto Twisted Fate is quite interesting because this says to me that they're prioritizing turret pressure and using Bard's mobility to just consistently out-rotate the Ku Tigers and push down turrets extremely quickly, which they have a lot of flexibility in this composition to go for those picks and to have that mobility on the map so that the Tigers simply can't respond as quickly. Yeah. Due to they... Magical Journey, Void Rush, and Destiny, there's really not a lot of ways that Ku, I mean, fortunately for them, they have Whimsy. So right. they can do some following, but it's nowhere near the speed at which Samsung can play the map. Yeah, I mean, the entire team of Samsung can rush around the map at a faster speed. And when the wave clear is relatively evenly matched, that mobility is going to favor Samsung and objective pressure. I'm taking some more boomerang harass in the top side, having a bit of a hard time of it. And we can see Prey opting for the static ship, just trying to maximize that wave clear right now. Very probably, wise. Probably a good idea, given the situation that's developing in terms of Samsung's itemization. Also, Ghost Blade for Fury, even more speed at movement on the map and killing <laughs> turrets, actually. Yeah. So this is a really interesting. I think Samsung's strategy is solid. Let's see if they can pull it off. Yeah, that's also some of these fights, perhaps, or get a quick dive and take a tower. Yeah, you know, allow Samsung for the quick pick and disengage too. I mean, so many uses. When, whenever you have mobility, your options really do expand in League of Legends. And right now, only two members here to defend this bottom turret. Eve is on his way as four members show up from the Ku Tigers. But there is a Destiny forcing the Tigers to back out. But it's actually going to be a gank in the top. The wild card's not hitting us, man. But Kube is in Mega Nar form as he tanks the tower in the beginning. He's going to turn to Mini Nar as he backs out from tower aggro. Meanwhile, Samsung, can they define the bottom tier one? They're actually just going to rotate in a mid and try and take uh, two tier ones and trade two for one right here. Could work out. Oh, and using the Tempered Fate to buy themselves some more time. I love it. That is really good. The top tier one has been taken by Samsung and the mid also now in return. So, Ku at Smab's this point. still dead, no teleport. And we have a TF pushing into a tier two. Now, Ku. Trying to answer right here, trading two for two. Oh, Can they get the get tier it. two? Looks like they will be able to. That Jinx fast pushing very successfully. So in the end, a trade favor for Ku. Yeah, good answer from Ku. They I mean, still want to go for the kills though right here. TF coming back in. Yeah. TF no ult though. Yeah, Samsung doesn't really have all the positioning they want for this one. So they will have to back out. But the Dragon is up in three. As you mentioned, uh, Smeb will be walking towards now. 
Uh, as he spawns, he does have teleport, but no need as he's coming just from base. Leganar pretty ready, but there's a medical journey and a stun on to Smith. They're going to catch him out before he can do anything. Knock up, and he's down. The rumble goes down. Dragon started by Crown. Good pick by Samsung, but are they still confident enough to continue the dragon? Looks like it. Ku Tigers thinking about backing out. Kuro wanting to go home, but they want to still keep up the pressure, and they might be able to with the explosive cast coming in. I think that they can't fight this right now. Kuve's ultimate's almost back up. It's going to be really... It's going to turn into a smite battle at this point if they keep this up. They're trying to burst it down, and Wisdom is going to get it. Evil's actually too far from that, but Samsung trying to go for a fight. Nice explosive cast will keep Samsung all at bay, and there is the Destiny Gate coming in. Flashes forward. There's a gold card onto Kuro. Kuro gets knocked off, but Crowd's going to pay for it. He eventually does go down to Prey, and Samsung, oh! oh Prey survives the last auto attack. Uh, the bo boomerang just barely missing prey right there, thanks to the get excited. So they trade one for one in the end. Samsung picking up Smeb earlier, however, but the dragon steal uh, evening that out a little bit. And Kuve just his ult came back up right as his rage went down. Unfortunately, yeah. this was a good start to it for Samsung for sure, getting that catch onto Smeb with the magical journey. Yeah, and that's exactly how you want to play this. Now, they invested a lot in terms of that Sivir ult to get that pick in the first place, and they should have been a little bit more decisive about going for that dragon immediately afterwards. Yeah, they seemed a little too wary. Of yeah, the they should have just gone on to dragon immediately. Yeah, even if an explosive cast came in, they should have still been able to win the fight. I mean, worst case, they would have had Temper Fate or something like that to buy themselves some Well, they more had time. Destiny back up, I believe, at the moment, so they could have just re-engaged on them from behind as soon as the Tigers walk forward. <laughs> Gorilla tries to get the flash play and can't catch Luna as he just magical journeys along the wall of the Baron bit. Very well done by Luna. These right. are the joyous moments of Bard. Crown now going for the Zonia's Hourglass. Prey's life is going to be quite difficult, but Prey already thinking ahead, buying an early QSS. That is really smart. Yeah, that's going to buy him a lot of safety. Uh, so Crown at this point, if he chooses to always prioritize Prey, his job will really be more to take that QSS out. So they're going to have to find some other creative ways to get rid of that or pick maybe Smeb again, you know, off from the side as he'll often be looking for a flank. Lulu, of course, will be a little bit of a tougher target with the Wild Growth, although if you do get her to use it on herself before a fight starts, it's not too bad. Koo Tigers have grouped up and they're trying to shove down the mid lane. And there is a 1-3-1 one, one split coming in from Samsung, though. Yeah. Top and bottom both pushing out pretty forward. And there's Here a teleport go. from behind from Kuve. And there's Temper they Fate. Prey. Prey is caught out. And Eve is positioned for the knockup. Prey gets slowed by the smite. Eve gets the kill. Crown, meanwhile, goes a little too deep. But there's a three-man stun from Kuve. Another stun coming in after his ultimate. Wisdom gets caught behind Gorilla. Has to survive with the wild growth. But Fury picks up that kill. As Smeb gets stunned one more time by Kuve. And Wisdom, will he die to the Ignite? Luna will pick that up with the Ignite. What a fight by Samsung, leaving only Kuro alive. And they're going straight for the Baron. Right, and they have the side wave pressured as well. So how many minions are they going to lose on the side? Just a, what a great setup for Samsung, using that 1-3-1 one, one pressure that they could put down. And they've got so many ways to do it as well, either with Eve or with Kuve or with Crown on the Twisted Fate coming in. And they absolutely crush the Ku Tigers in that team fight. Here we go, Kuve. Didn't get the slow. <laughs> Didn't get the slow. Ah, uh, well. So look at that. Catching wow. Prey right there is huge. Now watch. Eve also knocks him out of the channel. Yeah. And once Prey goes down, there's no more damage on this composition. Yeah, they take out Crown. But Kuve sets up the three-man Gnarl. Then they just go ahead and hit the stun right afterwards. Fury running around on the backside right here, just cleaning up everyone. Man, that ultimate on to Prey was so clutch. And then the follow-up as well, with Eve getting the knock-up while he tried to get the Lantern out. There was no hope for him after that. Banner of Command now on Luna for even <laughs> more split-pushing power. Also, how are they going to clear out the minion? Yeah. Great pickup. Really good timing. We'll see how if they can use it well. Man, the fact that... Luna purposely put it kind of across the wall only to get Prey instead of like two yep. people was also really smart. And they saw that Lantern coming in too, so they cut off his yeah. escape route. Very well played by Samsung. They definitely 
did I love this prepared. composition. It's so it's so fun to see. It definitely has a lot of interesting factors to it, lots of parts to watch. Now, the Ku Tigers, they've come this far, but things are starting to get a little bit out of control. Just using the locket there to make sure they don't take unnecessary damage, securing that tower. Samsung also playing it a little safe, uh, but in an aggressive way as they do have the lead. And, oh, they're looking for a pick onto Kuro. And oh, and there's a temper fade onto the tower so they can just go dive. There's a flash forward and the gold card, wild card, boomerang blade. Nice kill onto Kuro, and then they'll just commence to take the tier two and mid. QV standing on the side, trying to zone out anyone who might be looking for a jump over the wall turns into Meganar. I love how decisive Samsung is at using these compositions. There, there's no shyness about using multiple ultimates just to pull something like that off and then set up for the siege afterwards. What a great use of that Bard ultimate just to cut across without taking <laughs> hardly any damage. And here comes the bannered minion. Oh man, that cannon minion is huge. And Gorilla having to use the box to save himself and Prey. But it's not going to do too much as Samson just pushes forward towards the Inhibitor. Kyuve does get caught as Kuro sparks with home guards, but he's just going to be able to bounce out. Actually, there's a magical journey to avoid the equalizer. The Tigers can follow through if they want, but they're a little scared as they don't have vision right across the wall. Samsung, are they looking for a pick? Faking the retreat, no, that's, Fury. That's... Fury baiting it in with the port. But yeah, they're just going to back out. One thing that we didn't <laughs> mention about Samsung's composition is that for those magical journeys, they've got so many line skill shots on this team that if you try and follow someone through a magical journey, <laughs> you're going to get hit by Boomerang Blade, Wild Cards, uh, Boomerang from Gnar. Yeah. That is incredibly painful. So it's a composition that's also very punishing if you try and come out the other side as a group because the AOE threat is so huge. I mean, they also have so many guaranteed crowd control effects. As yeah. soon as you come out, you can knock up with Eve. <laughs> right, so I can just sit at the <laughs> yeah. exit. It's like, hey, thanks for coming over. And then you have the gold card. Of course, Bard, his kit itself synergizes as well. And Samsung will take their second Dragon, two to one in Dragon score. And I wonder how much that's going to come into effect when we see more Bard is how important is it to build compositions around Bard that discourage people from following you through the magical right. journey? And I think it's actually very important at the competitive level that you're not able just to walk through it for free. Yeah, and I of mean, course you could say with Bard, with his stun, you're never really able to walk through it for free, but you also want to punish that as, as hard as possible. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's one of the problems with Bard in solo queue is that if your teammates don't have all of that prepared, even if you magical journey out from a grand chase and get one stun, the enemy will probably still chase you yeah. down and kill you because you're so squishy. So Crown continuing to split push. He does have that Zonius. Another blasting one there. Double Thorn Mail for Eve and Cuvee. They understand that the main and most likely only damage threat in the late game will be Prey. I mean, of course, a Rumble does hurt a little bit. And Lulus can get big if they get Magi's Soul Stealer, but we're not going to see that as they also need to protect Prey for their composition to work. Lots of bursts onto the tower with that Lich Bane. Eve making sure to keep his teammates safe as Fury joins up in the bottom lane. And they're just going to take that, and Fury just going to on the hunt to get away. Yeah, what are you going to do if you're the Tigers right now? You, you don't have the tools to stop this split push. You really can't engage on them. Kuve here with a bannered minion, <laughs> top side. Yeah, the Ku Tigers, I mean, Smev has teleport, but obviously not gonna feel too good. So he's gonna walk on over, giving a lot of damage halfway down already. That cannon minion still living for a long time. There's the Destiny coming in from Crown just to give vision, and that's allowing the other members of Samsung to now push back out the bottom, and he's actually gonna go back up to top as soon as they can jump back in, as soon as they notice the other members of Ku Tigers are retreating. Really well prepared and good communication coming in from Samsung. They obviously have practiced this a lot, a lot. which is really good to see. Uh, they're very prepared for how to play out this situation and use their mobility to the maximum extent. Even though the Tigers did a great job of shutting down this Twisted Fate in the early game and playing defensively, uh, it's just been too much. Prey simply hasn't been able to stay alive, and he is the focus of these compositions. Without Prey, 
now that we've reached the late game and some of the tanks are getting bigger on Samsung, there's not enough damage from the Rumble to really carry them through a team fight. Yeah, not much at all. And Smev prioritizes that zone, yes. And he will be going for a Void Staff next. So he'll have more damage, but it's not going to matter if Prey gets picked off and Smev is caught with all the other crowd control coming in from Samsung. Well, it's interesting to me, too, because Prey has done pretty much everything he could this game to stay alive. Picking yeah. up that QSS as a third item before he gets that last Whisper. So it's not like the Tigers have really been building incorrectly. And they weren't even wrong to group up as five and siege in that mid lane. The issue was they just didn't see the engage coming fast enough. And you really have to be on your toes when Samsung can swarm all over you so quickly. Yeah, and again, so many ways to initiate from afar from the fog. Even if you have wards right next to you in the lane, the Temper Fate has a long range. And Destiny Gate, of course, coming in from halfway across the map. There's another Destiny. Is he going to come in with the Zonius? Can he get the Ghost Stun? He's not going to. He's just going to have to Zonius right on the traps. And there is a good equalizer to disengage. Prey does get a kill. He is excited, but he has to run out. He's taken a lot of damage from the Boomerang Blade and Wild Cards coming in. Luna was sacrificed, so Samsung without that temper fade, how confident are they? Fury. Whoa, Fury flashing forward, almost gets a kill on Takuro. Yeah, trying to reinitiate that fight, bait him back in after Kuve hit the Mega Nar. Now, can they get this inhibitor all the same? Looks like they will be uh, not quite yeah. able to, even with the Lich Bane. Yeah, Fury actually backing out while his teammates uh, looked like they actually wanted to take the inhibitor, but uh, because Fury wasn't there from the beginning of it, they're just going to back out, not going to take that chance. Even one hit being missed out, of course, can uh, mean the difference between getting caught after you take that inhibitor. Yeah, Luna couldn't quite make it work that time, but nice attempt. Yeah, well, didn't have a chance, really, a clean chance to use that temper fade. The Koo Tigers staying all grouped together, and even if you get caught as five, obviously that's still dangerous, but better than Prey getting caught himself. Prey just going, for whoa, look at those crits on those rockets. Yep. Welcome to late game Jinx. Yeah. Trying this games. trick again while the ultimates. Well, ultimates are back up actually for Samsung, so they can keep doing the same thing, but Fury's gonna have to recall just to heal up right there, so it's a good time for the Tigers to try and use this advantage in the mid lane. Take out a tower. Nice zoning with the traps, good dodging on the wild cards, and here we go. Cuvé is here, but he needs to rest a little bit as he's fatigued. And there's a the temper fate. They get Prey one more time. There's the Equalizer and an Explosive Castle. It completely denies the initiation. Prey gets knocked up, and he will eventually go down to Fury, who's at full health. Fury just chasing forward, doesn't even care about the Rumble running by his side as he goes forward for other kills. There's a nice ultimate from Cuvé. He's going to miss his house throw, but he's going to jump on over. Eve's going to get the knockup and not going to get the stun. Kuro's a slippery little yordle. Kuro's just going to get out. <laughs> yeah, I can't chase that one down, but it will mean another Baron for Samsung. Luna's ults wow. have been so good. Really beautiful. Like, so clutch. He has to hit, I mean, Ku is grouping, and yeah, uh, Prey has been, I think, a little bit too far forward, which has isolated him a bit. And in a way, maybe the two Tigers should be thinking more about grouping up, especially when the Meganar is down, so there's less threat uh, from that AoE stun. But... I mean, damn. Oh, man. Look at that. I mean, they were all the placement retreat. was so good. And Wisdom even throws out, they throw out Equalizer, they throw out the Explosive Cast, but everyone on Samsung can move so quickly. And Crown appearing in the back lines like that, Fury with the double kill. Yeah, and there's just no other way to protect him once that wild growth goes on to prey. And if Smeb is caught out, uh, in the front, getting crowd controlled by the other members of Samsung, and Equalizer's already down. I mean, who's going to chase after Fury if he's just free to do that damage from the side? Yeah, it's just been really well played. Samsung definitely knows how to position in this situation to clean up after that single member tempered fate has gone down. And Ku Tigers, you know, when you have this bard who's so good at aiming that ultimate, having only a single damage source on the enemy team is making it easy for Samsung to pick up this game. Yeah. They also get that third Dragon Snack, so even more mobility for the entire team I think that's of what they needed. <laughs> more mobility. They should all just get a second charge of Flash while they're at it. Hop over walls anytime they want. Where is the Baron Empowered minion here? 
<laughs> should be on the map somewhere. Uh, uh, oh no, that's just Crown and Fury rushing forward with on the hunt. There's Destiny just to make sure they have vision of all members of the Tigers. A nice boomerang blade. I mean, Fury's doing just as much damage against a uh, prey when he can't get that poke to kick off the fight. Descent is not going to connect onto a champion. Nice slow onto Wisdom, just keeping the Ku Tigers at bay as they take out that middle inhibitor once again. And Samsung now going towards that bottom lane. Cubey's already there, he, and he's all prepped to turn into Meganar if he needs to. Nice smite by Wisdom, trying to buy themselves some time. And there is a nice equalizer. He's supposed to cast against the wall, but there is a tempered fate. It's onto two members, but Cubey was also locked up in that stasis. So a knock up onto Prey. Fury's actually a little bit low on health. He has to back out, and Crowd almost dies. And there's the body slam, a double kill for Wisdom as he flanks the damage dealers. But on the other side, how many members of Samsung can stay alive as Wisdom body slams outside of his own base just to make sure his teammates can survive and clean up the base with the minions. And he's going to be able to lantern back out. And this is another case where the Ku Tigers are fighting so well from behind. 15,000 gold deficit and they're able to win that fight. No doubt they have a strong composition, but they got caught unawares early on in this game. And so they're having to play from really far behind. And oh, look at man. that, what a great combo right there. Luna and Fury get knocked into the wall, still taking equalizer damage. Kube goes in, but he gets hit up by that Tempered Fate. He hit that stasis, and Frey instant cleanse on the gold card that hits him as well. There's the wild growth, and he's able just to kite everyone out, no more crowd control to deal with this jinx. Yeah, and really then, well done. I mean, Cuvee getting hit alongside the enemies with that stasis uh, cost a little bit. Yeah. It wasn't, well, wasn't he could, the most deadly factor, but... He, he couldn't set up his gnarled. Yeah, he uh, couldn't because lead of him right into a lockup yeah. onto Prey, so Prey had that chance to just run out with the Whimsy right after avoiding that stun. So Samson will have to watch it a little bit. I mean, that is, that's the main difficulty of playing Bard. That uh, the location of your ultimate can really make or break the game. Well, a new lease on life, at least temporarily, but I mean, they have no inhibitor turrets. The Tigers coming back now is be quite extraordinary. Yeah, it'll, it'll take. But it's some this is time. what's so frustrating about watching the Tigers is you look at how beautiful their <laughs> team fighting and their map play is in the late game, and you wonder why they can't get a kill for 20 minutes, 40 minutes into a game. Knock up onto Wisdom, putting some damage onto him from Eve. They're just going to trade out in the end, though, with that barrel chasing after Eve. He's going to heal back out as he goes under to regen. Now there is an empowered minion in the top. So Smev going forward, and Cubey tries to knock two people backwards, and they get the knock up to Prey. He just gets deleted by Fury. Kuro having to run away. Eve goes for a three man knock up as Crown picks up that one. Crown still full health from the side, gets another kill with the wild cards in there. Not gonna pick up Smeb as he flashes into Fountain. Uh, Fury does need to watch out if they wanna finish this game for sure, because he's got all the attack damage they need. Of course, Crown with that Lich Bane will help take down the Nexus turrets, and Samsung will pick up a nice win against the Ku Tigers in set number one. That was such a fun strategy to watch from Samsung. Something that looks like they've really innovated, tried yeah. out, practiced thoroughly. They had a very good idea of how to play it. Decisive engages. It still shows the risk of playing pick compositions in this meta because the Tigers were still able to fight pretty well from 15,000 behind. So you really do have to get a big advantage right there if you want to take those 5v5s. And because of the current state of the game, it's almost impossible not to 5v5 fight to win just because you can't really split push an inhibitor with one person very easily without Baron that will always be contested. So, but even so, really like what we saw from Samsung. Fun composition. Tigers having a rough time with their single damage threat being repeatedly locked down thanks to Luna's fantastic Bardolts. Yeah, it, it's interesting because Kuro and 